Whether you're a developer or a business executive, if you're looking for a place to start when it comes to data warehousing, you've come to the right place. In today's world, data comes from many different sources. And the average business user interacts with about 10 different applications on a daily basis. Whether it's buying on the web, brick and mortar, ordering supplies, or tracking inventory. These applications play a critical role in day-to-day -day business operations. But with a lot of applications comes a lot of data. And what happens when you want to analyze data across systems? That's where data warehousing comes into play. Now there are a lot of buzzwords associated with data these days. But the idea behind a data warehouse is simple. Get all of the organization's current and historical data in one place and in one format where it is easy to query and understand. That's it. Now since this video is Data Warehousing 101, let's clear up some of the terminology that you'll hear often and come to know well. First is EDW. This stands for Enterprise Data Warehouse. Next is ETL. Now this is an acronym that you will hear and use often. This stands for Extract, Transform, Load. Now this refers to the processes you'll need to build to extract the data from the source systems, transform the data into the new structure, and ultimately loads the data into the data warehouse. OLTP, Online Transactional Processing. Now this refers to the type of data processing that usually needs to happen in real time, like for example in a point of sale system. More often than not, this refers to the systems that you'll be extracting information from for the data warehouse. OLAP, Online Analytical Processing. Now this usually involves systems that query many records in a database for analytical purposes. Now these systems typically don't require the real-time response times that OLTP systems require. I mean, think about it. A business analyst waiting 30 seconds for a report to return results, not really a big deal. But a customer standing at a point of sale register waiting 30 seconds for a receipt to print, that is a big deal. And this is why OLAP and OLTP systems have very different requirements when it comes to response times. Now let's take a minute to go through the history of data warehousing. Now the fathers of data warehousing are Bill Inman and Ralph Kimball although they historically disagree on the approach to data warehousing. Regardless of the approach, data will be extracted from the source systems and staged where it is cleansed and transformed before being loaded. Now this is where they disagree. See, Inman believes the data should all be loaded into the data warehouse first to ultimately feed smaller, more targeted data marts where the data will be consumed. Now there's no doubt that this approach will build more consistency since everything will be first consolidated into a single data model. However, this approach can often take a long time before the business starts getting value from the data warehouse. Now that's because building a complete data warehouse can often take a long time. And they call this approach the top-down approach. Now Kimball, on the other hand, believes in the bottom-up approach, where you build your more targeted data marts and then union them into a complete data warehouse later over time. Now this approach can deliver faster value since you can start using the data marts immediately as they become available instead of waiting for the entire data warehouse to be built first. Now what do I believe? Well having been through this process and seeing it play out, I believe in a hybrid approach where the strategy while building the data warehouse should follow the Kimball method in that you attack specific areas one by one. For example, start with sales, and then when that is done, let the business start reporting on that data while you move on to building out HR data. Now the technical implementation, I believe, should follow the Inman approach. Now this is where I believe you should build it all within a single database that will eventually represent the final data warehouse. See, I'm not really a fan of data marts. I believe in breaking down technical hurdles, not creating them. And what happens when Data Mart 1 has data that Data Mart 2 does not? Now being that all the data resides in the data warehouse, this is not a major concern. However, 
I believe that information should flow as freely as possible and require as little effort and intervention from IT as possible. The other reason is that with the introduction of cloud and other hardware advancements, having all the data easily accessible in one place starts to make more and more sense as storage and performance considerations become less of an issue. Now let's talk about the type of software you need to build a data warehouse. First, you'll need a good ETL solution. Now some of the more common names are SQL Server Integration Services or Informatica, but your decision on whether or not you're going to build a data warehouse in the cloud or on-prem may impact this decision. But regardless of whether or not you go to the cloud, you are going to need an ETL solution. This is critical to help you manage the massive amount of data you're going to be loading on a day-to-day -day basis into the data warehouse. But what are some of the important things you should consider when looking for an ETL solution? First would be connections. Nowadays, a good ETL solution should be able to connect to virtually any data source, whether it's a SQL Server, Salesforce database, or reading data from a text file. Make sure whatever solution you choose has the ability to connect to all of your potential data sources. The next thing to consider would be the developer tools. Make sure the tools are intuitive and you can find the skills on the job market. You're going to do a lot of data manipulation, such as aggregating, filtering, joining, so make sure the tools have a strong community. This is important because this will help your developers become more effective with the tools quicker. Now there are some lesser known solutions out there, and if there's a limited community, your developers may struggle to implement more complex solutions with nowhere to turn for help. Developing a data warehouse is hard enough. You don't want the tools to make things more difficult. Lastly is monitoring. You're going to need the ability to monitor the many ETL jobs you will end up building. And there is no doubt along the way you will encounter bugs and issues with source data that will require research. Once the business becomes dependent on the data warehouse, getting to the bottom of issues fast is going to be absolutely essential. So make sure you consider this up front and as you build these processes. You will come to appreciate it later. Now what about the data warehouse itself? Is a data warehouse a special type of database requiring special software? The answer to that is no. You can build a data warehouse on any database, SQL Server, MySQL, you can even build it in Microsoft Access if you want to. I don't recommend it, but a data warehouse is more a methodology. It's not a special piece of software. Now that's not to say that certain database solutions won't sell themselves as data warehouses, but the reality is there's nothing special about a data warehouse in terms of the software itself, and you can build it on any type of database you want. But that being said, what are some of the things you should consider when choosing a database server? First is costs. Costs of database servers can vary wildly. And maybe you want to save a few bucks and go with SQL Server. Or maybe cost is no issue and you want to migrate to a cloud database like Snowflake. Or maybe you prefer to keep things on-prem and you'd rather go to a solution like Netiza or Teradata. All of these things need to be considered and weighed into the decision. Next, you need to decide whether or not you're going to move to the cloud or stay on-prem. This is a major decision here, and I can make a whole video on this itself. But some of the important factors to consider here are what is the company's overall strategy in terms of cloud? Does the company prefer the OpEx or CapEx model? If the company prefers OpEx, then maybe you lean towards cloud. Otherwise, maybe you lean more towards on-prem. Last but not least is performance. Now, if you're a large organization that is going to be moving many, many terabytes of data, and you see this solution quickly servicing hundreds or thousands of users, then SQL Server is not going to cut it. The other thing is that it can be difficult to estimate the true performance requirements up front. However, if you know it is likely to grow quickly, then you might want to take advantage of the cloud's ability to scale. Now, although we're not going to go into detail about it in this video, the other thing to consider is the reporting solution. Building a data warehouse is a big effort, and you want to make sure users have easy access to the data and can take full advantage of the data warehouse and the benefits it provides. And a good reporting solution will allow them to do that. Now the goal of this video was to lay the foundation, but in the upcoming videos, we'll start to dive into more detail and build upon what we learned today. 
Thanks so much for watching, but please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell.